Hey there, wedding pros, and welcome back to the Eventful Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm Krista Graham. I'm absolutely thrilled to kick off season two with you. This season, we're diving deep into the heart of what we as wedding professionals do best, crafting unforgettable wedding experiences and helping our industry thrive. From the first inquiry to the final I do, we'll be exploring every step of the client experience journey. I hope to uncover the magic behind creating seamless, stress-free weddings that keep couples raving and sending you referrals. But more than that, this season is about growth for you, for your business, and for our industry as a whole. I'm passionate about helping each and every one of you reach new heights of success and fulfillment in your wedding business. So buckle up because we're about to embark on an incredible journey together. Get ready for inspiration, insights, and hopefully some fun along the way. Welcome to season two of the Eventful Entrepreneur Podcast. Okay, so now that you have an ideal client in mind, um, if you didn't listen to the last episode last week, we talked about using AI to find your ideal client. Um, It's, you might be asking, okay, now I know who I want to work with. Um, Where do I find them? How do I get more clients like that? So I feel like I'm going to be speaking to two different groups of business owners. The new business owners who have either not had your first client yet, or you've had very few clients. Um, And then the second group is established business owners who know who their client is. They work with several of them. They just want more clients like that. Um, Or they want to grow their business with getting more clients like that. So I'm going to give different examples or different suggestions for each group, um, but there might be some overlapping advice. So I think you should listen to both. Um, So for new business owners, finding your first clients can seem impossible. It can take, it it can seem like it's taking forever. Um, I really want you to be networking within your your wedding industry in your area, making connections and building relationships with other wedding professionals, um, with even people outside of your, of the wedding industry that can provide you referrals, um, that are going to be quality and, you know, of your ideal client. Um, I want you to improve your online presence. So whether that's updating your website, your social media, or, you know, updating your social media regularly, consistently. Um, And when you spend time on social media, I want you to really consider what social platform your ideal clients prefer. So if that's TikTok, you might need to get comfortable being in front of the camera. Um, If that's Instagram, um, work on, you know, providing really great value and beautiful with beautiful photos attached. Um, you have to figure that out for yourself, honestly, and it might take some trial and error. Um, it might mean providing, you know, value in Facebook groups or, you know, being very active, um, in your local craft beer community. I don't, I don't know. It's going to (laughs) be very specific to who your idol clients are and where they hang out. Um, word of mouth is a great way to get some clients. Uh, initially you want to make sure your family and your friends know what you do and know that you do it well. Um, and know that, that you are looking for more clients, more people to help. Um, if you don't tell them, they're not going to know. Um, You live this every day, right? You're constantly thinking about your business, but your friends and family have no idea if you have not told them. So be clear that you're looking to grow your business and you're looking to add new clients. Um, If you consider wedding shows um, like bridal events, wedding shows, do it the right way. Uh, I have done a couple of shows and I have seen so many booths where you know that they've paid, you know, $1,500 or $2,000 for this space to showcase their company. 
and the person is sitting behind a table, arms crossed, sitting in the chair, leaning back, um, looking like they're watching, you know, a baseball game or something. Instead of standing up, walking around, engaging with people, laughing with people, introducing themselves, um, not only to the clients walking by, but if it's kind of a, a lull in activity, talking with fellow vendors, um, just out there networking and being friendly. So if you're going to do that, do it right. Okay. It's a waste of money if you're not going to do it right. Paid advertising is always an option. Uh, but I want you to evaluate and really, really see if it's worth it. Okay. I had the opportunity to be involved in, I think it's called the Detroit wedding show or something like that. And, um, it's a, one of our local news channels puts it on. It's a thing that happens every year. And I was really tempted to do it. Um, the exposure I felt like could be good. The, um, just being, you know, feeling cool and being on TV, local TV, um, you know, give me a little bit of like, um, what's the word? Um, not pomp and circumstance, but I don't know, something to brag about, I guess. Um, and then I got like a two minute commercial or something about my business that they would make. Um, I considered it. It was going to be, I think, a $3,500 investment. And at the end, I decided, you know what? No, because my ideal clients are not sitting at home watching local news. They're, they're just not. Um, and in speaking with another wedding industry professional, I'm not going to name names, but in speaking with that company who did participate, they said it was absolutely not worth it. Not at all. It was a waste of time, a waste of money. They could have spent probably the same or less amount of money with a very good videographer and produced a um, better video for their company. So I'm really glad that I didn't do that. Now, there might be some kind of paid advertising opportunity that completely targets your ideal client. If so, that might be worth it. And it might be worth trying to figure out if you can pay for it and if you would earn money back uh, on that investment. So I thought it would be helpful for you to hear my first 10 paid wedding clients, um, where they came from. So this would have been, I started my business in the middle of 2017. Um, so my first 10 paid wedding planning clients. So I'm not including any free work that I did, any volunteer work in events. I'm not including any wedding planners um, that I worked for. Um, the, these are actually my first 10 paying wedding clients, okay? The first one came from Craigslist. <laughs> Do you even know what that is? <laughs> I don't even know if it's still a thing. Craigslist was an online like forum where you could go and all sorts of things. You could post services available, things you were selling. Um, if you were in search of things, hell, you could even post that you wanted uh, an escort for the night or find somebody to spend the night with you. Like it, you could find everything on Craigslist. Um, so my first client came from a simple ad that I put on Craigslist that I was a new wedding planner officing, offering my services. Now that was the one and only time I have ever used Craigslist for advertising. Um, and it technically, I don't think was paid advertising. Um, I think I was a free posting, but anyway, my first paid client came from Craigslist. Um, my second paid client came from a referral from a wedding planner that I had volunteered with previously and she was unavailable. So she sent the client my way and they ended up hiring me. Um, my next, uh, five of the first 10 clients. So half of my first 10 paying clients came from the not.com. I, um, paid for their advertising services for two years. The first year it really paid off. The second year it did not. Um, but I did get five of my first paying clients from The Knot, um, which is now called, I think it's called Wedding Pro, and it's The Knot and Wedding Wire um, merged. 
Um, another paying client found my company on Google. Another one was a venue referral from a venue that I had worked at previously, and they were impressed with the job that I did. And then another client came from um, industry network. Excuse me, industry networking. So um, going out, meeting other wedding vendors, and getting to know them, and then they sent they sent clients my way. <sighs> okay, sip of water. Hold, please. I don't know why my nose always runs when I try and talk and then it sounds like I'm sick. I'm not sick. <laughs> I just have a runny nose because I've been talking and recording podcast episodes all morning. Okay. So for you established business owners, um, a lot of the stuff that I said for new business owners is still going to work. You can still network. You can still do paid advertising, of course, um, referrals, of course. But some more um, advice uh, specifically for established business owners, um, figure out who your ideal clients have been, like who your favorite past clients, and duplicate them. <laughs> figure out how you got them. Was it from the knot? Was it from Instagram? Um, where were, did those people find you? And then focus your efforts there. Uh, client referrals. Always, always, always let your favorite clients know that you accept referrals and that you would love to talk to anyone in their friends or family circle that are engaged and need a wedding planner. Um, along those same lines, let them know if you do other events so you can get repeat business. Um, and if you don't offer something to past wedding clients, because hopefully you're not planning multiple weddings for them, but um, maybe consider expanding your services to continue to serve past clients. And this is something I really struggle with and I need to, um, to be better at advertising for sure, um, that I do birthday parties, baby showers, um, you know, bridal showers if they're a maid of honor for somebody, um, things like that. You know, I can continue to help plan their parties even after they're married. Um, strategic partnerships might be an option. I have seen photographers and officiants link up for elopement packages. Um, I have seen florists uh, and venues link up to do like a floral workshop, especially around the holidays, creating a holiday wreath, um, things like that. Um, hire a social media manager. This is something I did in, I believe, late 2019. Um, totally worth the money. She handles all my social media. She tells me what she needs if I need to do something. And um, it has been really, really a great investment in my business growth. Um, networking still, uh, like I said, but I want you to step it up and go to industry events and conferences that might not even be in your area. Um, Wedding MBA is in Las Vegas every year. I know there's several others. Wedding MBA is really the only one I have been to that's wedding specific um, out of the Detroit area. And I hope to be going back this year. Um, but research that and see uh, how you can network and kind of rub elbows with some of the bigger vendors and um, educators in the area and get some additional education there. Um, industry, uh, let's see, I lost my place in my notes. Boop -ba -doop -ba -doop. Um, okay, so my most recent wedding clients. So the past 10 clients that have hired me, one was a client referral from a past bride and groom. Um, one was a previous coworker uh, who was engaged and getting married. Um, so again, letting people know, your friends and family, know who what you do and that you're good at it. Um, five of the last 10 people that hired me for weddings found me on Google, which I can only think that maybe Instagram has something to do with that because, again, my social media manager updates my Instagram regularly. 
um, and I haven't blogged regularly. I haven't, I don't, I don't know why um, they keep finding me on Google and I'm not going to question it because uh, they're great clients. Um, another client uh, was a vendor referral from a photographer. Um, another was a vendor referral from uh, a, another wedding planner that was busy. Ironically, it was the same wedding planner that referred one of my first clients. And then um, one was a venue referral from a venue that I had worked at previously. So uh, it's always important to be refining and revising how you do things. If something's not working, um, stop doing it. <laughs> and if something is working, focus your energy there. So while none of my recent clients came directly from social media, like I said, many of them mentioned my Instagram being something that sealed the deal. Um, so shout out to Nina and I do wedding marketing. Um, they, a lot of my clients mentioned how they felt like I was speaking directly to them on Instagram. And of course, beautiful photos help as well. Um, but yeah, so those are some ideas on how to find clients, whether you are brand new or established. And uh, I hope that helped. So I would love for you to DM me on Instagram and tell me if there's a new tactic that you're going to try to find more clients and send any questions that you have my way because I am probably going to do a Q&A video at some point or a podcast at some point. Um, I also have a new challenge that I am planning. And once I get the link for that, I will update the show notes. Um, a challenge on getting control of your email inbox and how awesome it's going to feel when you get to inbox zero every single day. All right. I will see you back here next Wednesday and we're going to be talking about um, how to craft an authentic about me story.